Hello, Legal Show family. Juwan Buford calling in from Detroit metropolitan area that um, professional background that of a former investment advisor. And today I'm going to be facilitating a brief training about the exposure process. And, and first and foremost, I want to thank everyone who made the decision to listen to this overview. Indeed, I know you wouldn't have decided to do so unless you've made the decision to turn the corner, right? You said, look, I want to take this business from um, just being a situation where I'm simply enrolling memberships to earn a couple dollars, but I actually want to begin to treat it like a business. And in doing so, I want to take a more professional approach to doing so. I want to learn the process and that way have more tools in my toolbox to go out there and build the foundation of an incredible vehicle that will take you to financial independence. And consequently, you'll be at a point where you're spending more time doing the things that you want to do as opposed to things you feel like you have to do to earn income, right? So, we celebrate your success and congratulate you there. Uh, so we're going to be covering the mechanics of the exposure process. We're going to be talking a little bit about the mindset going into the exposure process. And then we're just going to give a couple examples, right, of what it sounds like when you're actually conducting an exposure. So there are eight steps that we've been taught um, in terms of the exposure process and, and how to effectively uh, consummate someone actually saying, look, not only am I interested, but I'm willing to take a look at the information. I'm willing to allow you to follow up with me. And therefore, we can get them to the point where they're willing to make more of an educate decision, right? And perhaps attend an event, whether it be a sit down, whether it be a, a briefing, a super Saturday or even convention, right? We know the bigger the event, the bigger the decision. So the exposure process, what's the steps required to consummate or complete an exposure? Where there are eight steps, right? Step one, be in a hurry. All right, we want to make sure that we're moving with sp speed and boldness. In other words, when you're calling individuals up to invite them to look at a tool or invite them to an event, um, the bottom line is this. You don't want to get on the phone and immediately start talking about the Games of Thrones, what transpired on Power Empire and all the other stuff that's going on out there. The bottom line is you'll look up in five, ten minutes in discussion. You're still having a conversation about television, it transitions to life, children, all other fun stuff. And sometimes you're in a situation where a person... Uh, may not be having the best day in the world and of course things go negative real quick and now you're in a position where you have to raise their spirits so they'll even be receptive to your invitation in the first place so you want to move with speed and boldness think about it like this if you invested 2.5 million dollars into a franchise or into a restaurant or into any type of business endeavor 2.5 million dollars for the infrastructure all that other fun stuff right the bottom line is you and I both know that's a lot of burgers, a lot of fries, a lot of shoes, a lot of, a lot of garments, a lot of toothpicks, a lot of widgets that need to be marketed, right, to earn that $2.5 million back so you begin paying yourself. Let's be real. You wouldn't be on the phone lolly gagging, right? You'd be moving with speed and boldness, right? And that's the approach you wanted to take. You want your prospect, the individual on the line, to know that you are moving fast and that this is something you're excited about, something you're enthusiastic about. This is not a hustle or, you know, something that you're just kind of getting around to when you have free time, right? You want to communicate that in your approach. So step one, be in a hurry. Be in a hurry, right? Behave as if you invested $2.5 million and you are moving speedily and rapidly to earn those monies back. And it will come off in your energy and in your music and people who are about that life, right? Achieving financial independence and building something big, they'll be attracted to it. So start with speed, be in a hurry. Step two, a sincere compliment. Whether it be cold market, warm market, um, lukewarm market, you want to start a sincere compliment. The bottom line is people's favorite topic at the end of the day are themselves. And if you can notice something about them, whether it be their jewelry, their attire, maybe you can compliment on their work ethic, compliment on their intellect, or their business acumen. Maybe there's a skill set or a talent they bring to the table that you admire. Compliment them. Family, friends, strangers especially. The bottom line is when you're out and about in public, you walk to restaurants, coffee shops, social gatherings, Nine times out of ten, you see an inordinate amount of people, what, in their phones, Facebooking, texting, Snapchatting, Instagramming, the whole nine yards, right? People really don't engage and talk to each other, and it's a great way to break the ice. People ultimately will conduct business with those whom they like, know, and trust, and, and a compliment is the first way to break the ice and get there with someone, right? Step three, make the invitation, whether it be direct, indirect, or super indirect. So what do we mean by that, right? Direct invitation you may have approached someone, especially if you have a relationship with them, and they know that you've already had success. They know you've already done well for yourself. They may look up to you for a variety of different reasons, right? We oftentimes refer to this um, personality type or this um, characterization as someone who's a blue, right? 
they um, know that you've done better. And so they're more inclined to take direction from you. So you could give them a phone call and say, look, you know, I'm excited uh, about an endeavor I just made an investment in. And I really believe it's going to help me achieve my goals, whatever your why may be. Right. It could be, look, uh, I, you are well aware of the fact that I'm tired of being in a situation where I'm kissing my children in the morning. Um, on the forehead and kiss them at the night in the forehead and that's the extent of our relationship and i think i found something to actually allow me to have time and freedom so i can spend more time with my children do things i feel like i'm in purpose to do as opposed to things i feel like i have to look i'd like to share some information with you if i were to send you a video or make an invitation to you uh would you take a look right that's a direct approach and it'll oftentimes work with individuals who quite frankly look up to you or have a degree of admiration for you indirect what do you mean by that? Exactly what it says, right? You're going to be a little bit more indirect with it, right? Particularly if you're dealing with individuals out in the public or oftentimes when you're dealing with individuals who believe themselves to be your peers, individuals who know that maybe you haven't done much better than them or vice versa, or you're not at a lower place than them or vice versa, right? They can just kind of see you on the even playing field. Whether it's accurate or not, self-perception is what? Everything. Oftentimes when you're approaching individuals. So you just got to recognize that. And so when you're approaching your peers or you're approaching someone in the public um, that you may not have a relationship with. And, you know, let me say this. I have to go there. Right. Because if you're doing a lot of cold marketing, you know, one of uh, my business mentors and a leader whom I have a high degree of regard for, Mr. John Hoffman, says, look, if you are spending too much time in cold market, that is your punishment for not asking for referrals. So that's a training in and of itself. But know that the referral process will eliminate a lot of the cold marketing that you may have to do in the beginning. It should absolutely um, cold market shouldn't even be your initial approach in the beginning. OK, but I digress. So here's the thing. Um, you're approaching individuals out in the public. The indirect approach sounds a little bit like this. Right. You call someone up and say, look. And particularly as a friend or someone that you've known or a family member, look, I found this thing, right? You share your why. Look, I'm looking for individuals who are entrepreneurial, self-motivated, those who are looking to make a living right, making a difference. They're looking to get off the hamster wheel, earn extra income, build their fortune on the side, or maybe they have a phenomenal work ethic and they've been looking for that opportunity that will set them free where they no longer have to have a boss anymore, where they can build something that's theirs. You know, do you know of anyone who'd be interested in earning the extra 500 perhaps or extra $1,500 a month part-time, right? Do you know of someone who's looking for a career change where they really want to take control of their lives? Do you know of someone, and of course, that family member or that friend, right, that, that warm market, so to speak, they may be thinking themselves, right? And you can ask them, hey, look, if I were to share some information with you, would you take a look at it um, so that you can identify other individuals who may be interested. They may raise their hand and say, me, that's me, right? Um, of course, you have individuals, um, particularly when you're meeting them in the public, right? Sometimes the indirect approach works better. You're having a conversation with them, you compliment them, you ask questions to find out, and you say, look, I'm looking for individuals who are entrepreneurial, self-motivated, individuals who are looking to get off that hamster wheel or perhaps earn an extra $1,500 from us. Do you know someone who would fit that bill? Do you mind if I share some information with you? That person may say, well, me. Right. Or they may take your information and actually be a phenomenal resource for referrals. So that's the indirect approach. Right. And of course, the super indirect approach uh, when you're often working with individuals. And of course, your peers are oftentimes considered greens. Right. That's the weak times so we characterize them as. But what about your reds? Those individuals whom um, have a high degree of success. Um, you hold in high regard. They know they've achieved more, whether it be professionally, academically, financially, personally, whatever the case may be. A super indirect approach is going to more than likely be the best approach. And this goes for individuals that you're working with out in the public. And this also um, involves individuals whom you have a relationship with, whether it be a distant relationship with or with them or a family member or friend is really close to the vest, right? You call them up, you, you know, briefly share with them you know, your why, and you just ask them indirectly, hey, you know, at the end of the day, you're sharp, you're smart, I have a lot of regard and respect for you, I really want to work with individuals like yourself, and I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing, and you've had a lot of success, and you know, if you could share your feedback as it relates to information I'd like to share with you, I'd be so appreciative, because I really want to work with individuals like yourself, and your feedback would be invaluable to me. You know, would you be inclined to take a look at this information if I share it with you, right? So that's the indirect approach, right? And of course, we could elaborate. Uh, that's why there are going to be multiple trainings, right? We know the, 
the, the mother of all learning is space repetition. And of course, in a short training like this, we're not going to cover everything. It's not exhaustive, but hopefully you're getting a better idea of what this process looks like. So number one, step one, you're going to be in a hurry. Step two, sincere compliment. Step three, understand the difference between making a direct, indirect, or super indirect invitation, right? Step three is make an invitation. Step four, if I would you. Right. So what does that mean? If I would share this video with you, if I would share this corporate overview with you, if I would share um, this information with you, if I uh, extended the invitation to you to attend our business briefing or our app launch workshop or our mix and mingle. Right. If I would do A, B, C and D, would you do A, B, C and D? The if I would you approach. Right. We're not going out there in the marketplace begging people to take a look at our information. We have the gold, and as Mr. Brian Carruthers says, look, the juice is certainly worth the squeeze, particularly here in Legal Shield. If you're willing to do the work, uh, we have just a, a plethora of success stories that we can share. Um, uh, profile success, I mean, profiling hundreds, if not thousands now of associates who are earning phenomenal incomes of our company. So we don't need to beg anyone to take a look at our information. It's if I would you, right? It, it's posture. If I would you take a look at this, right? Not please take a look at this. I'd be so grateful, right? No, it's if I would you, right? If So that's step four, understanding, utilizing, if I would you. If I were to share this magazine with you, would you take a look at it? If I were to share this DVD with you, would you take a look at it? If I were to send you this corporate overview, would you listen to it? If I were to extend the invitation to you for our app launch workshop and mix and mingle, we're so excited about it. It's going to be so many individuals there who have had tremendous success. They've helped a lot of people really down to earth. It's limited space, but I'll tell you, if you're able to make it, you owe it to yourself to be there. Look, if I were to extend the invitation to you, would you come? Would you come, right? If I would you. So step five, get the time commitment, right? And let them set it. In other words, if I would you, they say, yeah, of course, I'll take a look at the information. Surely, I don't mind. I have some time. I'll look at the video. I'll read the magazine, whatever the case may be, right? And you ask them, look, how soon do you think you'll get around to it? They may say, well, Tuesday at seven o'clock. Great. They may say Wednesday at noon. Great. They may say Wednesday at 9 p.m. Fantastic. You let them set the appointment, right? Let them tell you when they can get around to taking a look at it. Does that mean you don't act with speed, urgency, and bonus? Of course you do. You still operate with speed, urgency, and bonus, right? You want to give them as much incentive via your excitement, enthusiasm, take a look at the information sooner rather than later. But ultimately, you want them to kind of set the time when they'll tell you. And majority of time, people tell you, look, I can get around to it at this time. Right. So you get the time commitment. You let them set it. Step six. It's a confirmation. Right. So they said, well, I'll look at it at Tuesday at 7 p.m. You'll say, well, great. Fantastic. So if I gave you a call at 9 p.m. Tuesday, would you look to look at it by then? Right. We know the fortunes in the follow up. We're going to follow up sooner rather than later. Right. Every minute, every hour that goes by, the information gets rearranged in their head. <laughs> so you want to, of course, follow them sooner rather than later. Perhaps they say, well, no, I may not get around to it. Well, you tell me, when would you get around to it? They may say, well, I'll get around to it Wednesday at 9 a.m. Give me till then. Great. So if I were to give you a call Wednesday at noon, all right, we've looked at it by then. Or if I were to give you a call Wednesday at 6 p.m., would you have looked at it by then? And if they say, yes, fantastic. Great. Right. So you went and you, number one, you got the commitment. You let them set it. That was five. Step six, you also confirmed a time to follow up with them, which is absolutely important. And if you say you're going to follow them Wednesday at six, you want to follow them Wednesday at 557, right? <laughs> That's the time you want to make sure you follow up at the time you say that you're going to follow them. It exhibits a degree of professionalism, right? That's what that is, an exhibition of professionalism and purpose. And at the end of the day, people don't want to follow wandering generalities. They, they don't want to do business with wandering generalities. They want to work with individuals who are working on purpose or working with verve, right? They're working with excitement and enthusiasm, whether it's acquiring a product or service or doing business with someone. That is the energy. That's the music you want to exhibit. So you want to follow with them on time, right? And then, of course, once you've done that, you've confirmed that when you're going to follow with them, you schedule the call. Right. So basically another confirmation. Step five was give them get the commitment from them. If I would you, when would you get around taking a look at it? Right. Step six. So if I gave you a call this time at seven, we've well, taken a look at it. Yeah. OK. You've seen it for sure by then. Great. Step seven. OK. I'm going to give you a call Wednesday at nine. 
I'm going to give you a call Tuesday at 6. I'm going to give you a call Wednesday at noon. And then you get off the phone, right? No lollygagging because, of course, you have a, there are 300 million people out there waiting for your phone call. And you are building your business with, with speed and boldness. You're moving rapidly, right? So you don't have time to really lollygag on the phone. You want to be busy. You want to be in a hurry. Just how you began the call, that's how you want to end the call, right? So I'll give you a case in point. I have a good friend. Um, I was on Facebook. Uh, not, I don't do it too often, but surf it every now and again uh, just to see what's going on in other people's lives. And I saw that she had recently retired. And so I gave the young lady a call. I said, hey, this is Juwan. I'd like to speak with, let's say the person's name is Regina. Hey, Regina, this is Juwan calling. Do you have a moment? She says, well, yeah, I have a moment. I say, look, Regina, you know, you've always been such a hard worker, so industrious, just a sharp person. I mean, you've really managed to handle your life right. I just want you to know, I've always seen that in you. And of course, she was, thank you. I really appreciate that. And I said, well, look, you know, I just made an investment. I'm really excited about it. And, you know, I've been looking for individuals to work with like you. And here's the thing. We are having an app launch. It's a workshop that's taking place tomorrow, Tuesday at six o'clock. And look, here's the thing. There are going to be individuals there who've had tremendous success, really down to earth, um, have earned a lot of income. Um, I would love nothing more than just to invite you out. It's limited space, but look, if I were to send the invitation to you, would you take a look at it? And of course she says, of course I would. Phenomenal. Does that happen all the time? No, it doesn't, right? But I shared with her, I was in a hurry. Hey, do you have a couple moments? I gave her a sincere compliment. I told her, you know, in so many words that, hey, I'm doing this because as you're well aware of our kids, and I've been at a point where I really want to spend more time with them. I want my kids to know daddy. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm going to work in the dark, coming home in the dark, kiss them on the forehead in the morning, kiss them at night, that extent of our relation. I think I found that thing, right? And I think you're sharp, you're hard work, and you're industrious. If I were to extend the invitation to you, would you take a look? And of course, she says, certainly I would, right? You may have to extend that same invitation five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different times before you get one or two people to say yes. But it will be well worth it. And it increases the likelihood that when you follow up, that they'll actually commit, right? So there's another individual whom I gave a phone call to earlier today. Um, I called the individual up. I said, look, Tom, do you have a moment? Tom said, yeah. I said, well, look, Tom, here's the thing. I know you're a really hardworking person. I've watched you grow as a professional um, within your endeavor, within the law enforcement industry. And, and here's the thing. Um, I'm calling because I'd like to extend an invitation for you to take a look at some information. It may or may not be for you, but I tell you, you owe it to yourself to at least take a look. Town said, well, sure, I'll take a look. And I said, well, look, if I were to forward you an email um, about the information, if I were to send the information to you via email or text, which one do you prefer? Well, I prefer email. Fantastic. If I were to send it to you in the next five minutes, how soon would you take a look at it? Town's response might say today at noon while I'm taking a break. Great. If I were to give you a call about... If your break's at 12 o'clock, you think you've seen it by one? Yeah, okay, great. I'm giving you a call at one o'clock. How's that sound, Tom? Sounds great, great. If he says, hey, I'll take a look at it by um, lunch, and I say, well, if I give you a call at one, he says, well, no, give me a little more time. So, okay, I understand. When do you think you really will have taken a look at it? By this afternoon? He says, yeah. I said, about what time? Oh, five o'clock. So if I were to give you a call at five o'clock or maybe six o'clock, would that be better? Would you have looked, looked at it by then? Are you for sure? Tom says, yes. Fantastic. Look, Tom, I'll give you a call then at seven o'clock today. And thank you for your time. And I'm off the phone. Right. It's really that simple. Right. Now, oftentimes, if you're calling up people who are warm market, right, you call up people who are warm market, which is the majority of my calls. Majority of my calls are actually warm market. I may say, hey, Justin. You and I may not know each other, but we have a good friend in common by the name of Sarah. I work with Legal Shield. I had an opportunity to share some exciting information with Sarah about our service and opportunity. She was really enthusiastic about it, decided to take advantage of the membership herself. Look, you're a sharp person. I know sharp people typically don't make a decision based on a telephone call. If I were to forward you some information via email for you to take a look at it in your free time, would you take a look at it? And of course, based on the strength of the referral, time or the individual may say, hey, uh, surely I will. Well, how soon we get around to taking a look at it by sending it in the next five minutes? Well, I can take a look at it by tomorrow, by tomorrow evening. So you'll look at it by tomorrow evening. About what time do you think you'll get around to? Uh, maybe sometime five, six, seven o'clock. Great. Hey, so if I were to give you a call Thursday, 
uh, morning at 10 a.m. Would you have looked at it by then? You for sure? Yeah? Great? Okay, great. Look, I'll look forward to giving you a call, um, let's say hypothetically, Thursday at 10 o'clock. Fantastic. Right? Same deal every single time. If you're approaching individuals out in the public, you strike up a good conversation with them, right? You compliment them. Hey, that briefcase, that book, that clothing you wear, you look like you're a really sharp person. What brings you in today? What brings you to the coffee shop? What brings you to the business expo? What brings you to the bookstore, right? The places you may hang out. What brings you to the library? What brings you to the art um, exhibit today? Great, fantastic. You have the conversation with them. You start asking some questions to find out whether or not they're keeping their options open. And once again, if I would you, right? Hey, we're looking for individuals like yourself, sharp, bright individuals who are moving in the right direction, busy, and, and, and values their time, who are looking to get off the hamster wheel or looking for something new or part-time, spare time, right? What you're asking directly is, is that you? The answer raises their hand and they say, yeah. Or they may say, perhaps if you're doing an indirect approach, do you know of other individuals like you? Right? We're looking for individuals like you who are self-motivated, entrepreneurial, looking right now for an extra opportunity to earn additional income on the side or perhaps even strike upon a new career. Do you know of any individuals like that, right? If I were to give you this video, if I were to share this DVD with you, if I were to send you an email with the information, would you be willing to take a look, right? Would you take a look? The answer, nine times out of 10, after a compliment and a brief exchange, of course I would. Great. If I were to share it with you now, when do you think you'd get around to it? Well, I'll get around to it later on this evening. I'll get around to it tomorrow. Whatever time it is, you just confirm that time, right? Fantastic. So if I were to give you a call, they say five o'clock tomorrow. If I were to give you a call tomorrow at seven o'clock, you've looked at it by then? Great. So look, I'll give you a call at seven. I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure meeting you. Have a phenomenal day. Talk to you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Same deal, right? So that's just a brief overview in terms of the exposure process. Over the course of time, you just simply get better at it, right? You just go through the process over and over again. You've got a little bit of an academic overview. Now you take it to the marketplace and you begin to practice, if you will. And then you listen to this recording again. Of course, it's going to be supplemented by additional trainings that transpire throughout the marketplace. I always encourage individuals, hey, shieldnation.com, uh, a very useful, a very effective training site by one of the, put together by some of the top leaders in the Legal Shield family. Everyone have a fantastic day. Goodbye for now.